Hey everybody, Vaughn here with the Vonster Vlog and I want to take y'all on a tour of my mid, what is it, May garden. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see what's growing. So I'm going to start by taking y'all through from kind of the southwest end of the garden. So this is the western side of my house <clears throat> and I'm just going to do a quick glance over. And this fence goes all the way towards back to the back north end of our property. There's our chicken shed back here. I just want to give you all like an overview so that you have your bearings. And then I'll actually be taking you through the whole garden and then around to the um, east side of the house as well. So here we just have our shade stuff. We're still fighting to get this English ivy eradicated as well as the um, Virginia Creeper eradicated. But the hostas are still poking through really well. And y'all, Randy has officially started my gnome collection. I love my gnomes. That one actually lights up, this little lantern. But I kind of want to uh, sculpt and paint onto them uh, so they are not yet in their final forms. And if that's not a big leafy hosta, oof, I love it. <laughs> so uh, we went to the Master Gardener plant sale that was held at the beginning of the month and y'all I got some hostas for like one to three dollars it was amazing and I followed along with a Liz Zorab video with Byther Farm uh, to split my hostas into multiple um, well, some of them I left nice and clumpy, but I was really able to get a bang for my buck. And then I transplanted the uh, moneywort, I think it's called, um, from over here in that hole of filled rocks used to be where our pond was. But you can see we still have it kind of growing just kind of footloose around here. Um... And so I transplanted it from where it was growing in the walkway, like kind of volunteering, and have it underneath, like at the feet of the hostas. And you'll see how that does. Now you can see here we have clipped up uh, some bird netting because I do have ambitions of. Hey, pretty kitty. Yeah. Oh, of keeping this little deranged gremlin <laughs> out of my beds um because they're her favorite place to pee and poop uh please Callie please don't and then I think she's just gonna okay I was like are you really gonna okay pee and poop on camera that's fine I can't blame you um our alliums you guys are growing so you can kind of see right here is like the cutoff line of where it stops being shady and starts being sunny you can see because it's even where the Virginia creeper kind of cuts off um, so that's where I transition from hostas to celosia and marigolds and I have some sedum and our allium that came back from I think I planted the allium like two years ago uh, but um, at the farmers market they had little four cells of celosia for like a dollar, yeah. Um, so those were 25 cents a plant, and I was like, ah, that's so nice, so much nicer than like Lowe's prices. Faux show. Um, so in between these marigolds, like you can see, I have a marigold here and a marigold here. I went bloop and planted a little, like, Jack the Little pumpkin plant, and I repeated that motif all the way down because I want, I want pumpkins this year, and I can't do huge pumpkins in our little, you know, quarter of an acre lot. Um, because the whole thing, y'all, is a quarter of an acre. That includes the driveway that we do not grow on that's beyond that gate. And our whole house and front yard that we don't currently cultivate because that's where the dogs go. So we have this. And we have been building the soil up, uh, gosh, for eight years in this bed. Because this whole backyard, y'all, this is why I've gone with... Um, raised beds is this entire backyard is built up on like uh like a backfill from the local mine um so i basically have about an inch of topsoil and then it's just gravel like my whole backyard is grass growing on top of gravel so we've really had to fight and struggle to build up any sort of substantial 
um, soil and we also, since the whole yard is kind of pitched and we get really heavy rains, we were experiencing a whole lot of like flooding and runoff back here. Um, so trying to build up soil that does not get blown away by the wind, run off by downpour rains, um, or just seep back somehow into the gravel, because it seemed like for the first couple of years, the more we tried to build raised beds, the more the gravel just grew up and through it. And we still, like, it, it will just find like a random big rock that's like, really? This was not here before. Uh, but we bunch of straw, bunch of rabbit poop. We actually work with a local rabbitry um, that they have more poop than they know what to do with and we're lucky to be friends with them, not just because of their rabbit poop, but uh, so they actually bring us bins, which we'll see that in a little bit, just chock full of rabbit poop. And so that's what we use to help build the belts up in conjunction with, um, we work with a local uh, tree cutter, like somebody who like trims trees and cleans up like after the storms and stuff. And he brings us whenever we can fit it, um, truckloads of mulch y'all, which they also, if, if you live a little bit more urban than what we are, you may be able to sign up for a uh, chip drop. If you go to like, I think just Google chip drop or chip drop.com. Um, and you can kind of get put on their list of four local tree services to whenever they have a load of mulch, they'll just come and drop it off at your house, which is incredible. Now, granted, you don't necessarily know if something's been treated or what kind of wood you're getting, but y'all, free mulch is free mulch, okay? <laughs> I will take it. And you can see the bed just kind of repeats. Callie. I love you, girl. What are you doing? What are you doing? You sweet, deranged gremlin. So anyways, um, <laughs> and there's the train almost on cue. So we are fighting also to try to get the Virginia Creeper, but I don't know, I kind of like it on the fence, but it's unruly. It does not do to just stay on the fence. And there's also some poison ivy in there. So we're working on that. And we're gonna come around now. I'm gonna show you the pond and then we'll so this is our pond, if you can call it that. It's a very large bucket with water, fish, and plants in it. So I mean, technically, it's a micro pond. <laughs> we have black-eyed Susans, boop, boop, and boop. We have some mint growing, a dandelion plant. I just let dandelions grow where they lay. Like, I love dandelions so much. Um, some weeds in the back that I can't reach. Um, a rogue raspberry plant just arcing beautifully which y'all yesterday i saw a hummingbird at my raspberry row over yonder like it that whole row has like raspberries in it and we were sitting out here having uh drinks with a friend and i saw nobody else saw it so they thought i was crazy but i saw a hummingbird y'all <laughs> and then more silicia and some bee balm right there and I just tuck in some like marigolds and stuff too. So I, I need to get a little bit more mulch on this because I want to be able to keep the weeds down as much as possible. Gotta get that maple tree out of there. Um, but yeah, let's see if, if I'm quiet, which is unlikely. We may get to see some fish. I don't know. I'll see if I can get some footage of them when I haven't been yelling and stomping around. Um, and I'll splice that in if I can. So now we're going to go whoop, over here. And this is, well, my pond mucking pole. But this was the very first bed that I planted, probably like early March maybe. And our kale is doing amazing. Like, I need to figure out what to do with that much kale, like if there's a good way to preserve it maybe. Um, our radishes, I've harvested a lot of radishes out of that gap as well as right here, but our leaf cut and come again lettuce and some spinach. But this bed could have done well being covered with maybe something like the uh, bug netting over the other bed. Because I want to show y'all, excluding the marigolds in this bed that I planted yesterday actually, uh, this bed and that bed were planted at the same time so uh having them be covered by this bug netting y'all these are the best 
brassicas I have ever grown. Let me see if I can get this opened up for you. Because you can even see over here, my Brussels sprouts are getting too tall for the hoops that I put in. So, that's my fault, not theirs. <laughs> and I'm going to see if I can just move the camera. And I just have it wrapped around like a pole here. Oof. <laughs> little harder to do one-handed, but we can just pull it up. But, oh, I actually have broccoli and little pansies mixed in with spinach. And, like, listen to how crisp this is, you guys. Like, I don't know what you get. It's so good. Nothing like spinach for breakfast. But I'll get more... Mmm, oh that's good. Of this whenever, um, um, num num. Okay, I'll put the camera back into the tripod now. Uh, whenever I have both hands to address it, um, and take the cover off, I'll show you guys a little closer. But we also have, oh here, I'll just leave the tripod and then come around and uncover it on this side. Okay, so I planted way too densely, but in years past, I have never had this kind of success. So, whoops, we have, let's see if I can tighten that so it didn't happen again. We have um, beets, which I've been harvesting for the greens, mixed in with our cabbages. And over here, we start getting into the realm of radishes, um, <laughs> which all need harvested at this point. But gosh, and these huge, huge, look at that big, like no holes in it leaves. I cannot believe how good this is doing, y'all. Like, um, you must not go on. Oh, okay. Pro quality camera work here, by the way. <laughs> um, gosh, just, I'm actually going to harvest this kind of jumongous. No, I'm going to get the one below. So I actually pick some of these huge leaves, not just because they're beautiful, but I give them to my rabbits. Um, and my rabbits absolutely love their big old cabbage leaves. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get this covered back up, but this is how this bed is doing. So while we've only been harvesting so far radishes and like greens, it's been going really well. Like, I'm very, very pleased. So... <laughs> The rabbits are jumping around. They're so happy they have their, their cabbage. Um, in this bed, we had planted at the same time as this other one. Now, the cabbages and stuff were from transplants, but I did the spinach and radishes at the exact same time as what I did this one. And you can see how stunted these little spinach plants are. And I really feel like that's because they didn't have the cover. Um, <clears throat> so, next year, I am definitely tucking all my beds in but now we do have a lot of onions the stringy straight up things are onions um and kale and spinach but I've also yesterday just planted the last of my marigold transplants because they were getting very root bound and planted squash seeds so I'm really excited to have my squash in the ground now I do need to remove this vertical support out of this bed just to make it so that I can cover um the bed with like bird netting to try to keep the chickens out if I decide later in the season to let the chickens out and about the yard because man y'all they are forces of nature like the, the destructive power of a flock of chickens <laughs> they're maniacs uh, <laughs> no worse than I am I'm sure okay so I'm gonna stumble over this way and my potato bed y'all I'm excited about this one Randy's excited about this one we're, we're potato eating people so um, which we also have volunteer pumpkins coming up from Randy got me a bouquet of pumpkins last fall uh, and which is really just like a bucket of pumpkins it made me happy um, <laughs> so, um, but we have some volunteer pumpkins coming up um, all over this bed actually and then all 
the little sprouts that aren't pumpkin are potato. And then also some like old rotten onions that I just dumped there. We'll see what happens. And then also some old rotten onions that I buried. They're doing much better than the ones that I just dumped there. But, you know, that's not particularly surprising. <laughs> so, ooh, a little bit further in. Let's go the next row in to these two beds. So this one I have, and I will have the netting and bug netting, like the bird and bug netting that I'm using down in the video description. Because here you can see these are our peppers and eggplants. Um, all of which were from the, uh, these front two peppers, Boop and Boop, are from the Master Gardener plant sale. And all the rest of them are from the farmer's market. So I was able to get a fantastic deal on seedlings um, compared to, you know, what I'm used to paying in for if I go to like Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart, which are like kind of some of the only other options around here unless I want to go to a specialty nursery. And while they're great for, you know, the specialty stuff, I, it's, you know, I kind of just want some $1 pepper plants. So now over here we have... I've planted in this section, like just in the past couple of days, um, I've planted some bush beans, like probably two rows of spaced about six to eight inches apart. I, I usually plant my beans pretty densely because I want to come through and harvest them all at the same time and then um, pull the plants up, put them in the compost and plant a second batch. So uh, it'll be better for like, that's not going to be nearly enough beans for canning. I hear you birds. That's not going to be nearly enough beans for canning, but it'll be perfect for like freezing or uh, just doing a big meal prep. Everything else in this bed is sage. Well, and oregano right here in the front corner, and then two marigolds, and then I've got more oregano right there. So, but um, the that sage plant in the back corner has done so well, and it's so pretty, and it was so nice to keep me company through the winter that I was like, I need more of this. And I'd really like to start making some of my own dried sage bundles. And while this is not white sage, because we live in a little bit too wet of a climate for um, uh, that sage plant to grow well, uh, regular old kitchen sage still smells really good. And gosh, I love the way those raspberries look. I, I need to like sit down and be quiet through my book for long enough and see if the hummingbird will come back and I saw a video the other day on YouTube of like a thousand hummingbirds or something and I was like oh, I need more hummingbird feeders <laughs> because of sweet little birdies with their crazy little beaks um and then these back two beds boop, have done nothing to yet this was our strawberry bed I was leaving it to see if any of the strawberries would come back it is so overgrown and overtaken with weeds and stuff that I'm kind of going to need to start from scratch on that one and then this bed here uh we are going to be planting <clears throat> uh bush beans down low and cucumbers growing vertically which I had forgotten but in this bed here I do have in the center kind of slight hill you can't really call it a hill but down the center row I do have cucumbers that will be growing up um, these vertical supports that we have. So now I'm going to take y'all to this back corner next. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, actually, let us visit the sitting area, which I've really been wanting to flagstone or something. <clears throat> That's a uh, mm, cost prohibitive. So, so we're just moving the chairs and keeping it scooped, but like the chairs sink so badly into the uh especially if it rains <clears throat> you'll just sit and just like sink in even if sam or z just sit in it so hey gonna do shadow puppets bark 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 um okay so we have purple heart or purple queen depending on who you're talking to it's just a beautiful like creeping purple plant and then a whole bunch of oh coleus which are these very pretty little leafy plants. Um, and then, oh, like a random hosta just hidden there behind the pole and some Asiatic lilies coming up, which I don't think they get quite enough sun over here. Well, hey, little gremlin. Are you, are you too cool to, to talk to me now, Callie? I love you. Who's my dad's to be cat? Okay. Um, I'll have a breakdown because my cat hates me later. Uh, so this is my other bed that was planted maybe a day or two before 
um, the other bed that I just showed you that was covered in fabric like this. Now this one I did not do any crops underneath the cabbages. I just did the transplants because this bed has been so notoriously bad about having weeds um, from like morning glories especially that I wanted to know for certain that if it is not a transplant then I do pull it as a weed. So, which breaks my heart because there's a whole lot of like sunflowers growing in this bed and as much as I do love morning glories, they're just so invasive This like in our yard that like they'll overtake literally everything else and we're way too close to like shared fence lines and you know other stuff that we don't want our gardening problems to become our neighbors' gardening problems. So this year, this is my little patch of Asiatic lilies, which another thing from this past uh, winter, y'all, is we got down to, I think the lowest was with wind chill, negative 24. I hear you, girl. Somebody's laying an egg. Um, so we lost all of our gladioluses. We lost some of our bushes up in the front, um, which what hasn't been lost to the cold. The dogs are uh, systematically peeing on until it dies. So... We try to like hose them off, but there's only so much we can do for the poor things, the plants that is. Um, but I am going, my lilies fortunately made it through. It's really nice to see what survived the cold. Our fruit trees survived the cold. That's really good. We've got some cherries and stuff. I'll, I'll show you. And uh, whenever we get over there. Um, but yeah, so at the end of this season, I'm going to have to, actually today I should probably research and see how to divide and transplant Asiatic lilies because this is getting really really dense and I think I'm going to transfer some of them to along the rest of our western fence line um, to kind of just flesh out what's over there currently which brings us around to this is still so these are all of our poop bins <laughs> and I mean for the sleight of heart don't look but that's a ton of shit <laughs> um, but we give the, the chickens uh, a bin a day and I'm actually going to be going through today and topping these off with just filling up the bin the rest of the way with mulch that because it's getting to be just like solid poop creep over there it's like concrete but made out of poop yo okay I'm going to be real quiet for just a sec there's a bird we have a pair of nesting morning doves let me see if I can With my chickens yelling. That's such a pretty bird, you guys. I hate to disturb her. Yet here I am. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to go too deep over here because she seems to be finding food and stuff. Um, but along this whole row, we have for the first time this year, uh, <laughs> we're, gr we're growing determinant tomatoes. And this was the compromise I was able to make with Randy because earlier in the season, and I think I even said it out loud in the vlog, but I had sworn, I had pinky promised Randy that I was only going to grow five tomatoes. Y'all, I'm a liar. I didn't mean to be. <laughs> and Randy was like, no, I knew. I knew. When you pinky promised me, I knew you were lying. But I didn't even know. So I have 12 tomato plants. Which isn't bad. Is not bad. And he's like, it's way better than what I thought you were going to do. But... He was like, I don't mind it a bit because you got determinate varieties, so they're not all going to be growing just, you know, well into November. Um, but we do have, yep, yeah, she laying an egg. I'm sorry, girl, I gotta come over here. I hate to disturb you, but I need to show these people my tomatoes. So I have one planted here on this corner. There's like a cage, and then there's another cage just a little further on. Um, that we have another tomato planted in but if we're just going up this whole row is tomatoes with little flowers like it's either salvia or celosia or calendula calendula is how I've always pronounced it in the past because that's how it's spelled but then I heard another human say it and I was like oh that's incorrect okay 
<laughs> and then in this back corner over here, y'all, we actually have some Jerusalem artichoke that I was able to get at the Master Gardener plant sale. And I've always, always wanted to grow uh, sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes or um, they like they look like sunflowers, but they have like a tuberous root. And I'm really interested in having a little bit more of a privacy barrier um, along the fence. I'm going to stand in the shade. I'm sorry, girl. I just scared off that bird. But we also have, these are some asters and some asters and a bee balm. <laughs> Boop. And then these are like two chamomile plants, two or three it looks like. I need to, I need to separate them because they're crowding each other. And then this whole patch right here is a plant called obedient flower, which I think is ironic because it is one of the most unruly plants I've ever met but I love it is these beautiful purple flowers that you can like angle the flower and it'll stay pointing in that direction but that's the only thing obedient about it the everything else about the plant is like not spiteful but just insanity so so there's that and now we are going oh, and I planted this here behind me with sunflowers close up against the fence like those ones have been seeded by the chickens so I'm just leaving them they're black oil sunflowers and then we also have these salvia in front of I stuck in a few mammoth sunflower plants so in this bed along here maybe we'll get a different angle for y'all but we have more sunflowers because again they the uh, well the birds love them not just my chickens but like the bird birds um, I just kicked the tripod. But the birds love the sunflowers. I love the shade that they provide the chickens, and they're so beautiful. And we also have dill and marigolds. I think this is probably planted a little too densely, but meh, meh, meh. Hey, girls. <laughs> I had to let them loose. Like, I paused the, uh, the video and gave them some feed and let them out and stuff, and they were like, we've also got some grackles who very openly dine with my chickens now <laughs> um and then over here we have randy and i are huge oops i need to stop kicking that tripod man randy and i are huge fans of thai basil it's probably our favorite herb um and it's beautiful so this entire bed if it's not raspberries or bee balm like this right here is some bee balm that we have growing um we have along the whole length of this bed alternating marigolds of some variety whether it's the african or french varieties planted in between with some thai basil now that over there we've got like the basil behind it and stuff and then there's also a bunch of sunflowers in this bed too but just up the entire length of the feet of the raspberries we have that combination until we get up to here where we also have some just regular old like Genovese basil planted in and I've been getting those transplants all the Thai basil I got for a dollar per plant at the Master Gardener sale like if y'all have Master Gardener uh, programs in your area it's a little probably late this season but check them out and see if they're gonna have a plant sale again next year and I save up all year to just buy a ton of plants and it helps support um you know gardening education and volunteer efforts in your area so that's pretty cool but uh they didn't have as much well we were able to get like an almost an entire flat of thai basil um we uh, have been getting our basil basil from like the grocery section uh, you can get it as like a fresh herb that still has like a very small neglected root ball on it but it's still hey it's growing it's a little struggling some of them but uh i was able to get those for probably almost half the price is what they're selling basil transplants for at like lowe's in the gardening section so oh sorry i kicked a stick and it scared callie so we also have under here underneath our cherry tree um lots more bee balm which i've been transplanting out which these guys flower like red which is so pretty and the hummingbirds love it Hey kitty, I love that cat so much. Um, so yeah, this is one of our Bing cherry trees. And I don't know if I can see any, there's some fruit, a little bit. Like, uh, the, we had another cold spell that came through and um, it's not happy about that. 
like so we've got a lot that's just kind of withered there on the tree but we do have <laughs> there's one we'll get at least maybe one cherry this year this tree is doing a lot better or was last i checked it with fruit mm, no i don't see well oh, there's there's one so yeah I'm not banking on having enough cherries to do anything other than like fresh eat this year but we'll see oh there's another one and we don't spray or anything like um so that's probably why we're not getting the best results but also our cross pollinator died with our cherry trees our cross pollinator died so we'd gotten a dwarf cherry tree but it does not coat like its flowering time is about a week off <laughs> from when the bean cherries are flowering so uh i don't think it's doing a whole lot for pollinating but over here underneath our lady statue we have some polka dot plant a parsley I just wanted to see how parsley does in this spot because it's very shady um, and then we have some hostas but it's also it's very shady but it's also very dry so I haven't gone through and done my watering yet this morning so we have this mulched very heavily to try to retain as much moisture as possible but that is a loud bird y'all what kind of bird is that too by the way is that a blue jay I don't know I'm trying to learn these things but it can get overwhelming um, but yeah, and then we also have more coleus mixed into the polka dot plants in like two random hostas. But every time it rains, uh, this, the tree catches so much of it, so, uh, not a whole lot of it makes it through. So I'm going to come around this way. And this is the last bed I'm going to be showing y'all today. But this is our little fairy pond. And we have some petunias and different things that we had gotten at the farmer's market, some more salvia. I forget what those ones are called over yonder, that little pot, but super cute. And I'm gonna come around, because here in the stump, we planted a marigold and a hen and chick. Hen and chick, so we're gonna try to <clears throat> see how that does. And then here in this bed, we have evening primrose and marigolds and mint and sedum and oh what's this thing called it's something adoratum i don't know oh and then uh bachelor's buttons here and here hopefully we'll have them they'll open back up we have a whole bunch of naked ladies we have a whole bunch of lilies that are growing and then coming around to this side, we have, let's see, I'm actually going to leave the camera this way and try to capture it wideways. More bee balm, more mint. Oh, I absolutely love that allium. Um, a daylily that's coming up. A whole bunch of this, like, creeping jenny. And then more obedient plant and bee balm. So that is how, oh, Callie, she rubbing on the tripod. Come here, baby. You wanna, yeah. Come here. Oh, I love it. Uh, this is our garden. This is how it's growing. Um, so far, we have, I mean, two more beds to plant. And most of it right now is watering and weeding and maintaining. Um, I think it's a very good idea if I could give any gardening advice to Pastavon, who has legendarily been a bad gardener for most of my life. Um, like, very, very bad. If I bought plants, they were going to die. Um, despite my best or worst efforts. But I've kind of figured out to just not meddle so much. <laughs> weed frequently and, like, shallowly. Like, like, just weeding a little every single day. Get them when they're small. Get them when, uh... <clears throat> you know before they have much of a root system and before they just kind of overtake everything and that's I really like having the raised beds set up in the way that they are <clears throat> because if like every other day I tackle one raised bed which is a four foot by eight foot section or the equivalent of that in our longer beds which is kind of denoted our tent are not tent stakes um fence posts are about eight feet apart so I'll just focus on today all I am doing is between these two fence posts of just weeding and like kind of maintaining um 
has helped keep it very manageable because if I did if I do it you know every day then like all of my beds through a two week period have been weeded um and then I come back around and there's a weed that's like two weeks old but um you know it's not so bad once you get caught up with it and things are mulched and stuff so it's been a lot of work like very intensely here at the beginning of the year but I think it's probably still gonna get away from me come August the way it always does but I love it absolutely love the the process <laughs> and I'm really excited to oh that baby spinach y'all is so good I garden for the spinach alone because like it I, every time I open up the spinach from like the grocery store in like the sealed plastic boxes it makes this like spinach burp of you know that there's like one leaf in there that went all mushy and green and is stinking up the whole thing so just coming out and having like fresh spinach out of the garden is like mm. and Randy doesn't like he used to hate spinach um and then I grew it and he's like oh this is good and he'll just eat spinach straight he doesn't like it cooked or anything he'll just eat spinach straight and I'm like I'm not gonna argue <laughs> like you don't have to take your salad dry like a barbarian but that's fine <laughs> um but yeah so the only other stuff we have to do in the garden other than like watering and maintaining and stuff is I'm gonna be putting finishing up mulching tons and tons of mulch uh we have hopefully another um big old truckload of mulch coming today I don't know how he's gonna be able to do that because there's a trailer in the way I'm gonna have to text him uh-oh um, so we'll get that figured out. Uh-oh. Uh, panicking. Uh, that's fine. Um, so we're gonna get things mulched, ah, hopefully, and get the rest of the stuff in, either netted off or covered up or just, you know, something. Try to keep the bugs off, try to keep everything doing as good as it can. And then it's just harvesting and maintaining and enjoying. Um, we are going to be doing a little bit of planting and weeding and stuff in the front garden, in the front yard this year, but again, anything that we plant up there, um, even just putting a cage around it doesn't really help because the dogs just pee right through the cage, so we actually have to put like a topless bucket <laughs> around it like so that the dogs can't like pee over though so i'm convinced at this point that like z will stand on sam's back to pee over and onto something or they'll make like a catapult and just like lunch turds over <laughs> it's probably not that complicated but it really seems that way like i've got um two rose bushes that more than half of them are dead and I've been thinking about taking out the rose bushes and putting in blueberries, but again, I don't know how I'd keep them alive, so we'll see. But I was going to at least try to put some of like my old squash seeds um, in like the front flower bed or some sunflowers or something, or at least mint. Mint, if, if anybody watching this, if you feel like you're a terrible gardener, try planting some mint. Like, people are like, oh, it's invasive, it'll take over your yard. I have many a mint plant that has barely survived, but I needed something that's, like, kind of, you know, will survive me. <laughs> so, um, and mint does that for me a lot. And I just plant it and let it take over. Where It's not like I've got, like, fancy golf course grass for a front yard. Uh, I have dog poop and dandelions, and I'll take it. Um, but whenever it gets mowed, it smells so nice. It smells like minty dog poop. It smells half nice. Um, how about that? Uh, but no, it's I, I do recommend pin, pin, mint. Sorry, just watching Callie do stuff. Uh, I recommend mint, maybe even in a pot, um, if you're into that. And then just water it and see what happens. <laughs> so, um, but I'm really excited about um, learning more about food forests, but also just any kind of method for building soil where it will retain moisture because so much of what I'm seeing is you know we'll get a lot of rain but then we'll have just non-stop wind like bracing trees are going like this wind for like so that it, it just the air just takes all the moisture away which is nice because it's not horribly humid to be out in the garden but I'm trying to just retain as much moisture in the soil itself. Um, whenever I lived in Tennessee, I didn't have nearly that kind of problem. I had problems with drainage. So the soil in your area may have different needs and 
um, things that it you know requires for your area if you have particularly sandy soil or if you just don't get any rainfall or if like in Tennessee we had very heavy clay soil that did not drain well with like you know 60 inches of rain a year 50 or 60 I think um, or sometimes droughts so just trying to build the soil up to be as resilient as possible um, as healthy as possible because if you have healthy soil you have healthy plants so that being said I think I've rambled enough I'm going to finish dumping my coffee into my body and just enjoying the day and watching the birds and hanging out with the cat and all sorts of stuff and also I think my battery is gonna die so <laughs> I will see y'all next time so until then you guys keep on keeping on Bye! Let me know how you're doing down in the comments. Bye! <laughs>